Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they've built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstars. So this is where we interview people that are crushing it in this business. And we show you guys the inside scoop of how multifamily investors are creating massive success in their businesses and in their lives. And as always, I've got my co-host, who's the director of my massive action team for the Warrior Group, Mark Nagy on the call. Mark, what's going on, brother? What's got you excited lately? Hey, Rod. Nah, man, just, I love these episodes. I mean, from what I heard, just talking before we uh, jumped on here, I heard some uh, some pretty big door counts from uh, our guests here today. So I'm excited to get into it and learn some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's a good guy. He's a good friend. He's been in our warrior program for years, and he's originally from Denmark, and I was from Holland. So he immigrated just like I did, uh, and he um, you know has had a successful career in telecommunications and IT. Uh, his name's Jens Nielsen. Forgive me, I didn't even say your name, right? And but but he just retired from his W two to focus on real estate. Um, you know, he's he's been uh, you know a, a key principal and a GP in over a thousand units and a limited partner in Good Lord, a couple a couple thousand mobile home park lots, six thousand storage units. You know, he does note lending and private money lending. He's just all over this real estate space. So we're gonna have a lot of fun today. Welcome to the show, Jens. Yeah. Thanks, Rod. I'm really excited about this opportunity to talk to you again. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, that's right. We've had you on the show before. Probably it's been over a year, though, on the on the main podcast, not on this multifamily rock stars. But uh, yeah, so take a minute and talk about your background, as it were. Um, you know, for those that didn't get an, a chance to listen to that first episode, uh, just bring people back up to speed. And like, you just like just retired, I think, right? I mean, like in the last couple of months or something. Yeah, even less than a month ago. Less so than a yeah, month it's, ago. wow, it's, it's awesome. very new. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I'm in my I'm in my late 40s, and about five years ago, after been in the IT field for many years with a successful career, I was like, man, I got to continue to do this for another 20 plus years if I ever want to quote unquote retire. And I just didn't feel like I want to do that, continue and trying to keep up with innovation and all these changes in the IT field. I wanted something new, something exciting I could build for myself. And I looked around, I was like, what's out there? You know, so many ways of, of, of making money these days, but the best way I really found was real estate investing. And it's literally, it's, it's less than, slightly less than five years ago, I got started. I think in July of, of 2015, 2016, I bought my first property wow. and got so hooked on it. And you know, it's just been in a crazy ride since then with, with tremendous amount of, of well, success and, and just keeping focus on the on what I wanted to achieve. So, I mean, kind of here's the proof, right? Right. Yeah. That's no. And you've got too. you've got an incredible focus for sure. I mean, and guy, you also do mountain uh, like like biking as well. I mean, you're you're really skilled at that. I remember you had a bad accident a year or two ago. Uh, I remember going through that with you. But how long have you been in the warrior program? Refresh my memory. Yeah, since the beginning. And yeah. I mean, what is it? Well, you actually talked to me to join, right? <laughs> I think you yes. actually talked to me to join. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's unusual. And so that's that love it. Um, so so you know, talk about, um, you know, let's focus on multifamily. I know you've diver you've divested into some other asset classes as well, but let's focus on multifamily for purposes of this call. Um, you know, now you have aligned with other people, uh, coaches in the warrior program, other people um, to take these deals down, correct? Could you, you know, talk about maybe the first deal you did and how you, how you made it happen? You want to you remember? Yeah. So, you know, I started, I started with small thinking and small deals early on because I didn't really have any coaching. I didn't have any like mentorship. They're like, oh, right. I can go and buy a four unit. I know how to do that. And I can do my own money. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, you know, kind of blessed that I, I saw the, you know, I started, I started listening to your podcast, like, man, there's a different way here. And when, when you started the, the program, they, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta sign up here. And the biggest thing I wanted was like, well, I wanted the coaching and the training, but I also wanted to find the right partners mm -hmm. because, you know, you can go quickly by yourself, but you can't go very far. It's been my experience because you run out of money and you're like, well, now I'm stuck. So I did a few deals and then I, you know, started when, it's, when back when we had live events, I would go to those and I would meet some people 
And I, I met some guys that were like, I felt like they'd done a few things and I wanted to kind of align myself and partner with them. And that's what we kind of got started. You know, we did a, a few syndications. So I took it on a small role, but just kind of got involved and just kind of would see what it meant to be a part of a, a larger deal, what it meant to be part of a syndication to kind of learn from that. And that's really took off doing that. I have a quick follow-up. What role did you play in these first deals? Did you wear multiple hats or just one hat? Multiple hats, you know, I did underwriting, uh, you know, on-site due diligence, raise some capital, investor communication, you know, kind of taking on the areas that I felt like I'm good at. I'm, I'm an introvert by nature. So being out there and connecting with brokers is probably not my, my strength, but give me, you know, let me work from the back, from the, the back office and I'll see some good results that way, you know. Love it. So you got started, obviously, you were thinking some smaller deals. I know some people, when I chat with them, they're thinking, oh, I want to start as an LP, right? Passive investor. Obviously, you've done a lot of uh, LP deals, passive investing. So for people listening, they might want to start that way. What sorts of things should they look for in the team that they're investing into? Yeah, I did also start like LP investing before I did on the okay. into the GP side. And I think the key thing is like, who is the team, right? Who's on the team and what is their level of experience, especially in a market? You know, have they done more deals or other deals in that market? How well have they done if they've done anything that has gone full circle or even just operated for a few years, get some historical data and just kind of see how they're meeting their projections, right? And and really figuring out, you know, what's what's behind this. Do they have some good sponsors? Do they have some some very experienced people on the team. That's one of the key things. It really, there's really three things I look at is the team, then it's the market. What market are they investing in, right? And why do they why do they think that that market makes sense? And then finally, it's the property. What's the story about that property? What level of risk are you taking on, right? Are you doing a heavy repositioning on a class C asset? Uh, and then hopefully the return should be reflecting in that. Are you taking that class A asset you don't have to do too much work on and maybe it's lower returns because I think a lot of people don't recognize the risk you take on by taking on some of these lower class assets for sure. Yeah. Um, by the way, since you brought it up, Mark, let me throw it out there. Guys, if, if you want a list of questions that you'd want to ask a GP before getting into a deal, this will really help you uh, evaluate, identify and evaluate a good GP. Text the words uh, GP questions to 72345. And I've got a really nice list of all the questions you really should ask. And, and, and you know, Jens mentioned some of them and there's just a whole bunch more there. So that'll be a, a good resource for you. So let me ask you this, you know, Jens, when you were, you know, you joined the Warrior Program and you started connecting and, and you know, I remember you, you, were, you were definitely introverted. You definitely pushed yourself and I'm really impressed with you in that regard. The fact that you have been on my podcast now twice, you know, is, <laughs> is amazing and, and, and you're just such, a, such an awesome success story. What sorts of people did you align with that, you know, that you feel like helped you ramp this success for yourself? I mean, just, I don't know, you answer that any way you like. I love that question, right? Because, and, and let me actually step back. If anybody asks me, what is the, the thing I love about real estate investing? I always say it's the people I have an opportunity to work with. I mean, there's no questions asked there. So that does kind of set maybe the stage for this question. And the people I align myself with, well, typically you would be attracted to somebody that's similar to you, but I realize that's not the best choice in partnerships, right? So I'm the analytical person. I'm the kind of the, back end kind of, you know, getting stuff done, the, the, you know, the implementer, if you will, I aligned myself with people that were a little bit more outgoing, a little bit more comfortable going out there and connecting with the brokers and doing all those things. Right. Because I feel like if we're all out chasing deals and nobody can figure out how to get across the finish line, you won't be successful and vice versa. As everybody's sitting at home being a little bit introverted, then you don't get anywhere. So the best partners I've had are people that are great broker connections, really good also investor connections and, and those aspects where I can kind of like, well, let me fill in the blanks, you know, on getting this deal across the line, right? Like you have, you have Robert that helps you with the, <laughs> some of that stuff. Yeah, actually, actually Scott now, but yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. And, and those are some of the best partnerships we've ever seen. So 
Yeah, I, I'd actually love to kind of go the opposite way of Rod, what Rod just asked. I know he mentioned, who do you align yourself with? What I'd love to know is, what are some things or people that you had to actually cut out of your life to reach the success that you're at today? Because I think that's equally as important. Yeah, what'd you sacrifice? That's a good question. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I think I learned a couple of things, especially around the type of investors that you may want to partner with. If you, if you take on a, you know, a true limited partner, make sure that that person is comfortable being completely passive. They're not going to question every step you take. And I've had some, and I was like, man, this was probably not the, the right choice there. So, so be aware of that before you start taking on partners and investors, what type of personality do they have? What did I have to cut out of my life? I mean, as, as Rod said, you know, I've been a professional, I mean, I really had professional uh, racing license for a year, bicycle racing. And I realized, you know, 10, 12 hours of training every week was not going to cut it when I was trying to work and do my, my, uh, my real estate investing. So that had to be reduced. Um, but you were still writing though. I, I remember, cause I mean, you wouldn't gotten injured. You were halfway, you know, about halfway into our warrior program, I think. And then you got that injury. Were you racing or just screwing around? I was racing then. And we can also get into that. Cause that was a pivotal moment in my, in well, my I, life. I want to then, then, then keep going with the, the, that question. Then, then I will, I will cue up that conversation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, yeah, so cutting out some of the racing. Yes, I still I still ride. I rode this morning. I did an hour and a half this morning, but not nearly as much as I used to. Right. Right. But also people that you know, I think early on in life, you just your friends are just friends. That oh, here's a cool guy, or girl. Let me hang out with that person without much intention around what's behind it. Mm. So I didn't like deliberately say to somebody I didn't want to be friends with them. But I was like, well, this person is not in the same growth pattern that I'm in. So maybe I should decide to spend less time with that person and be much more deliberate around hanging out with people that have felt like on the same journey or the same mindset. Awesome. Awesome yeah. answer, buddy. And guys, I hope you take note of that one. That's so important. Who you hang out with is who you become. You know, I just had my multifamily boardroom of which you're a member now, Jens, and I know you couldn't make it, but um, we just had it uh, last week and a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. And, you know, I want to be around people that think what I think is hard is easy. So, Love it. Well, go, but let's go back to that accident because I remember it was pretty serious. And, and uh, so t talk about what you want, what you wanted to talk about there. Yeah. I mean, this was, it's, um, it's three years here in May and I was um, doing mountain bike race in Grand Junction, Colorado. And I, I, I had a crash. I've crashed many times on my bike, but this time was, was pretty bad. I ended up with a, 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 a crust kidney actually. Oh. And and wow. a couple of uh, injured vertebrae in my back too. And, you know, internal bleeding and everything else. I literally was in the ICU for five days. And wow. um, my wife has a picture of me lying there all pale and with, you know, various tubes. <laughs> hmm. And, but it also, it was kind of a wake up call because I had always been like, oh, I can go and race my bike because then I can show that I'm better than others and I'm good at something. So there was a little bit of lack of self, I don't know, worth there to some degree. And I proved it by racing my bike because I was pretty good at it. But I also realized I'm getting older. I'm not you know, going to get faster. And I was like, man, this is not the right approach to life. It's not about showing that you're better than other people. It's about the journey. And you talk a lot about that too, mm -hmm. right? It's enjoying the journey. It's, it's being with the right people versus the outcome because there was never a lot of satisfaction in winning races. It was just, eh, well, it was another trophy and I had dozens of them. Hmm. But I realized I was focused too much of, of the outcome versus the journey. And now it's like, man, you know, just the, the process, I've gotten much more deliberate around the process and intentional around the process. And I love that now. It's just, hey, man, Good for you. get a deal if you do it. If not, There'll be another one coming along, whatever. I so love hearing that, brother. I can't even tell you how much I love it. Awesome. Wow. Obviously, you've had a lot of uh, mental shifts in your life, you know, for the better <laughs> there, uh, whether it was uh, through a crash or whatever. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's an insane story, uh, but sometimes it takes a wake-up call like that. But um, what, what, is, what is something that you'd love to, to change about yourself, Jens, but maybe it never will or you think never will? Um, 
you know, I, th I think I'm the long-term strategic planning is something that I need to get a lot better at. You know, I have a tendency to kind of be focused on right in front of me. So that's a, that's a process that I'm certainly working on. That answer really surprises me. I just got to tell you. <laughs> it's that. funny, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that one, that, that's not the one I would have guessed. Please continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, good to surprise you a bit. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's sometimes, you know, I guess, and maybe I'm better at it than other people. I just feel like I have, I have a ways to go there, right? And, you know, um, I think the other thing is, you know, I've, I've been on stage a couple of times at your event, Ron. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm scared and I love it, but I mean, being, becoming better at going out in front and, and, and speaking to people, at people and sharing my story. I mean, that would be something that would be amazing to, to do more of that. Well, I, I can tell you, you're, you're a thousand percent more comfortable than than the last time we interviewed and 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 really you know even even on stage I, what I recall so you know you're absolutely uh, pushing yourself and you know it's interesting because Tiffy and I just had a conversation about this we just went to a mastermind in Costa Rica that some of my warriors put on um, you know Garrison and them you know uh, and uh, and she's an introvert and and you know you, you an introvert has to after they're in a social setting they have to go be by themselves and. It's just a, such an interesting dynamic for someone like me that's an extrovert that gets more energy from being out there now. I thought I was an introvert. I'm not. But uh, uh, but so let me ask you this. You know, there are a lot of people listening that want what you have, Jens, and they want to build this dream. They haven't taken action yet, or maybe they've done a duplex or something. What words of wisdom would you give them? Find a find a partner that you that can hold you accountable, that can help you take massive action, and that's not exactly like you. I mean, my right. current partner I'm working with, without him, I would have not have gotten to where we're at. I mean, we were literally closed four deals in the last four months, five months. I mean, that's incredible. And this I is the one even... you mentioned you met through the Warrior Program, yes? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. By the way, guys, if you're interested in checking out and applying for our warrior mentorship program text. And, and I like the word, we want to help you crush it in this business. So text the word crush to seven, two, three, four, five, again, to apply, just text the word crush to seven, two, three, four, five. And, and we'll see if you're a fit for us. And if we're a fit for you, and we're very, very selective and be candid because we've created this ecosystem. That's just incredible. It's just growing organically and everyone wanting to help everyone else. Would you agree Jens? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I miss, I miss going to events. I mean, that was the most oh, fun I know. time I've had. <laughs> well, I'll put it out there. I'm pretty sure we're going to have one in November, or December. So I'm, I'm, I'm I putting mean, it out there. Uh, but uh, it's, it's going to be Denver or Dallas. And so um, that's, that's the plan. I'm going to talk to my team about it in our leadership meeting tomorrow. Uh, but uh, um, anyway, uh, go ahead, Mark. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I, we kind of glossed over something that was huge, which is obviously retirement, five and a half years. I mean, people work 50 years in a regular job, and they don't even have the retirement that they want. You did five and a half in real estate. And I know it was funny because you just mentioned something you got to work on is more long-term planning. Did you, did you set out in real estate? Uh, with the goal of retiring early and and now that you've reached that what's what's the next goal for you yeah so i set out i remember this planning session me and my wife had actually we do the best planning when we're driving because she drives bless her heart and i sit next to her and bounce ideas off her but we had a planning session five years ago going somewhere i don't recall where and i said okay if we buy a fourplex every year for 10 years we'll have 40 units now probably about to replace my income that was the thinking i had five years ago and then, you know, it, it suddenly just accelerated. And this is the thing I think people don't realize that there's that thing you do one deal, it's like, oh, I'm, I want to do something bigger and bigger. And it kind of accelerates kind of exponentially, right? I mean, I literally in this, again, I mentioned we've done four deals in the last six months. I made more money in those four deals than I did in a full year of working in my <laughs> W2 job, right? And I was like, man, this is just blowing my mind. It's incredible. Right? That's just and acquisition. That's just your piece of the acquisition fee, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Acquisition fee. So, so I mean, that doesn't even count the cash flow, the tax benefits, everything else. So those of you that don't know, when you do a, put a deal together, you charge a freaking acquisition fee because you, you kiss a lot of frogs to find that deal. And, you know, like we charge 3% and, and, and I won't waver on it because, you know, we've had deals fall apart. We've spent a lot of money on due diligence. And, and so, you know, that's, that's uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. 
Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, buddy. What is your definition of success? How do you define success? Hmm. I think really finding something that you're passionate about that, that doesn't seem like work to you, right? That you'll just continue to do and you really focus on the, and you enjoy the process, not, not necessarily the outcomes. I like to say, you know, high intention, low attachment. So in really every day I'm working on this is exciting and new ideas are generated, right? So just, just growing every day and, and, and achieving new things and stuff, but not necessarily like, oh, I want a certain number of units by a certain date. That's, I'm very careful about saying that because don't attach your self-worth to a certain number because that's just pointless. Like just make sure that you really enjoy the process and learn, and work with people that you truly enjoy working with. So yeah, yeah I feel like yeah, that's, yeah. that's my it. definition. What's your, what's your, uh, just a couple more quick questions. What's your favorite quote? Do you have a quote that, that hangs on your wall? Do you have anything that you, you circle back <laughs> to on a regular basis that really helps motivate you? It's funny. There's actually one on my screen right in front of me and it says, see yourself living in abundance and you will attract it. Rhonda, oh, I Brian. Love it. I love it. I love it. I have one on one, one, my wall in my exercise room. God's wealth flows through me in avalanches of abundance. Thank you, God. And that's just meaning b- abundance in all forms, not just money, but, but, but people and love and friendships and you name it. Uh, love it. Well, listen, I'm going to end on that positive note. Uh, Jens, I really appreciate you coming on, buddy. And, and, uh, really great to see you. And I, I promise you, we will, we will figure out a way to do an event this year. Cause I miss it. Tiffy misses it. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to, we're going to make it happen, brother, but, uh, great to see you, my friend. Likewise. Yeah. I'm super excited yeah. to see everybody in person again. Yeah. All right. Talk to you later, Mark. I'll see you later, buddy. All right. See you guys. So one other quick thing, we encounter so many people that are frankly frustrated. You know, they're looking in the mirror and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to escape the rat race. They haven't been able to build cash flow to the point where they're able to have financial and time freedom with their families. You know, and maybe they see other people buying real estate and creating, you know, incredible cash flow. And they think, well, it's just scary. You know, buying apartments is intimidating. And I get it. See, that's why we created our Warrior Mentorship Program. They're our coaching students and they've had extraordinary results. My students, I've been teaching about five years and own upwards of 140,000 units now that we know of, right? And we feel like it's just getting going. Now we're looking to grow this group and really take it to the next level. And honestly believe that the greatest transfer of wealth could be upon us right now with this current economic environment. Everything's going on sale. So we're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework, really like a blueprint or a map, literally step by step. And then they're able to leverage our systems and our incredible network to raise money and equity, to find deals and close those deals and build partnerships really nationwide. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more in our incredible network and take advantage of the unbelievable opportunities that are upon us, you can apply to my Warrior Mentorship Program by texting the word CRUSH to 72345, or you can go to mentorwithrod.com. And what we'll do is we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out and see if it's a fit. Now, again, you can go to mentorwithrod.com or text the word CRUSH to 72345 to apply, and we will speak soon.